January 8, the working commitment. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in help, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Romans chapter 12, verse 11 and 12, King James Version. Picture it, Jerusalem 457 BC. Our hero Nehemiah has a burden to rebuild the walls of the city of his birth, the city of David. The burden is so great on his heart and it shows on his countenance when he, a Hebrew captive and a Persian king's cupbearer, goes in to serve King Artaxerxes. The king asks the reason for his sadness, and Nehemiah offers a silent prayer and explains his problem. Because he has found favor with the king, Nehemiah is granted leave and given official letter of support and provision to take with him to begin his God-appointed tasks. Nehemiah arrives in Jerusalem to find it a shell of its former self. The glory is gone and the task to rebuild is daunting. Not only do neighboring enemies threaten to invade, but internal dissension among the Hebrews also surfaces. Nehemiah could have thrown his hands up in the air and gone back to the palace in Persia. Instead, he prayed. With God's help, he began the test. The Bible says that Nehemiah assigned sections of the broken walls to various families and groups to rebuild. When threats came, the people prayed and armed themselves with sword in one hand and tools in the other. Little by little, because the people had a mind to work, the wall was rebuilt. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 6, King James Version. Likewise, we are to occupy ourselves with the building of God's kingdom until He puts us to sleep or comes for us in the clouds of glory. It is hard work because sometimes God calls us to do tasks that, for some reason or another, are downright difficult. Sometimes I want to throw my hands up in the air and say enough. There is more to life than teaching people who have no interest in learning and under less than ideal conditions. Yet, I have a choice. We each have a choice. It's the choice to, number one, run away as Jonah did. Number two, makes excuses as to why we are not qualified as Jeremiah first did. Or number three, gird our minds with prayer and the sword of the Spirit in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 to face down the given task with faithfulness and confidence as Nehemiah did. We can believe as he did that God is with us and will strengthen us to fulfill our goals. We can believe that for each task and for each willing imperfect hand, God will equip and perfect. Oh, that the world had more Nehemiahs.